Um, let's turn now to the issue of the unemployed. Uh, let's talk about how, uh, as with unemployment in the United States at over 8 million people, how people can use some of the strategies in Be the Media to reposition themselves for the workplace. And I'm particularly interested, David, in people over 50 who may be less comfortable with inter the internet, with computers, with social media, and how they can um, become more fluent in the use of these tools. Yeah, there's, um, a, the, you know, the wonder, the, the challenges we face today are, are sometimes seeming insurmountable. We talk about this in terms of the American dream in the book and can be defined in a number of ways. But, you know, the traditional version of the American dream was, you know, you'd get your house and have health care and be able to afford a secure and a dignified retirement, take care of your children, and uh, leave the world a better place. And we see that this dream is increasingly out of reach by most people. They're losing their houses, they're losing their pensions, they're losing health care, all traditional versions of pieces of the American dream. And so with the unemployment rate going up, we see increasingly you know, a challenging market. So what we're trying to propose in Be the Media is uh, a way of getting out of that, a way of really rebooting the American dream and making it more egalitarian so that it's not just the top 1% that own the majority of wealth in this country, but uh, again, when I go back to that business model, we want to move away from a couple of squillionaires, if you will, working on the backs of hardworking consumers paying $20 for a CD and on the backs of artists giving up 80% of their royalties and into a business model that's more egalitarian with lots of creators buying and selling and trading from each other. So we create maybe more media millionaires and fewer media squillionaires. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the sort of big picture. When we talk about the unemployed, you know, right now there are 21 million people who claim themselves to be self-employed, solopreneurs, hanging out their own shingle and basically trying to create a business on their own. Then there's the unemployed as well. And then there's the elderly. And one great example I have is a gentleman named Carl Atkinson out of California who has a who was trying to write a book called Perpetual Discovery. And his thesis is that um, because of increased health care and people living longer, uh, the elderly have so much to contribute to society. Uh, people live now to 100 years old, 90 years old and 100, and it's only going to increase in our generation. People will be living to be 110. How do we take advantage of all their knowledge and all their accumulated experiences? So he's got a book he wanted to put out called Perpetual Discovery, and I suggested to him, he had such a wonderful speaking voice, you know, start writing it, put it up on a blog, and start building your community. And as soon as he saw how easy it was to create the blog, he was really excited, but even more excited now because he doesn't even have to write. He has such a wonderful voice, and if he can access people in their homes, wherever, whenever, and however they want, He's now on, uh, thinking of a show on Blog Talk Radio for Perpetual Discovery, which is just perfect for him. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for the elderly to get their knowledge and give it back to people who can benefit from it without having to get involved in all technology. If you know how to operate a telephone, you can have your own radio show. I mean, how much easier is it than that? And it's all a social media network as well, as you know. So that's for the elderly for, and for the unemployed. I really do see this book as a business plan for people to work in from home. If they're still at work, they can work part-time on this or full-time if they like, from an office, from a den, from a hotel room, from almost anywhere. I got an email from somebody who was homeless who wanted my book, literally living under an overpass in a cardboard box. And I sent the book to a P.O. box, and he's been in touch with me since, saying how he's gotten some great ideas. He goes to the local library. He's got a blog now. A homeless person is using Be the Media. I had to send it to a P.O. box. So I think, again, it's not a golden bullet, but I think at least it gives some practical advice for people who might be able to take advantage of the new media and the new economy and sort of leave behind all that, those thoughts of, oh, I need millions of dollars to get my message to millions of people. You don't have to do that anymore.